Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of the show. And on this episode, I'm going to be talking about a movie that you've probably never seen before. And that needs to change. It's Mind Trap, a low budget action movie from 1989 that totally changes the game when it comes to action movies from that decade because, well, I'm going to show you why. The mind games start right away. And I'm talking about the poster, of course. Just look at this thing. A cerebral puzzle that will have you scratching your head long after the movie's over. Right in the middle is a person holding a gun, but there's no way to tell who is holding the gun because they're wearing gloves. But what's going on back here behind the gun? Is that a fire? Don't know, can't see it. Now most movies will put predominantly the main characters on the poster, but with Mind Trap, you get Dan Haggerty and he's only in the movie for a couple scenes. And also, I don't even know who this is supposed to be. The poster also says, Total Mind Seduction, but there's nothing sexy about this movie at all. So there you go, a movie that plays mind games right from the start. The poster. You just got mind trapped. I think. As I mentioned, Dan Haggerty is in this film, and I reviewed a movie with Dan Haggerty about five years ago, and the weird thing is, is that there's a lot of similarities between this film and that film, uh, mostly with the production side of things. Just like with Elves, the audio in this movie is terrible. Sometimes the recording is bad, other times it's the mixing. But in either case, it makes understanding exactly what is going on in this movie that much more difficult. So the movie starts with this man sneaking into a safe and stealing a bunch of diamonds. Well, our protagonist, Shayna, sleeps until this guy steps on the cat's tail. Shayna manages to kick the cat into his face and runs into the kitchen, but there's nothing in the cupboard. You know, for all this trouble, we're gonna have to disguise this as a rape murder jewel heist. But it is a rape murder jewel heist. Make the disguise all that more effective now, won't it? Okay, I'm kind of confused, but let's just keep going with this thing. Anyways, she manages to trip him with the rug by only using one foot somehow and shoots him in the stomach. Turns out this is actually a trailer being towed by a truck. And here's where we find out that this was all a movie. See, most movies start off by showing you the movie you intended to see. But with Mind Trap, you get a movie inside a movie so that you can be all confused like, Wait, what? This is so, wait, I thought that, what? Oh, oh, whoa! It's pure brilliance. It's a movie inside of a movie, you know? It's like Inception, except it's a movie. You just got mind trapped again. See, there's, there's many layers to this. It's a labyrinth of storytelling. I'm telling you right now, kinda. In fact, it's so intricate and complex that I don't even know a lot of what was going on. It was just past me. You know, my mind can't uh, can't comprehend all of the layers and uh, <laughs> subtext. So I guess this was the latest movie that Shayna starred in. And to be honest with you, I kind of want to see that movie. Because if that's how it ended, I have many questions. The first being, how did this man sneak into a house while it was being driven down the highway. But we're never gonna get the answers to those questions, so we can't dwell on that. We just have to forge ahead here. There's a very intricate, complicated story ahead. I can feel it. And you know me, when I got a feeling about things, it's usually right. Like 10 years ago, when I felt it would be a good idea to do a show uh, covering these, these obscure, hilariously bad movies. And I thought, this will be a good idea. Good use of your time. The audio in this scene is so poorly recorded, you really have to strain just to understand what they're saying here. Which is weird, because they used ADR on one of the other characters here. So it makes you wonder, why didn't they do that for the other audio that was so bad? What you end up with is this weird mix of bad audio and clean audio. Well, I wish you told me that before you set me up there. Well, I thought the queen of the beach would have a nicer place to stay in a small cell like that. <laughs> Listen, buddy, they don't pay us a lot of cash in the Navy to defend the likes of you. Anyways, Shayna's director, Sergei, 
tries to get her to do an audition for this Republican media consultant, Roger Ratka, who makes political campaign commercials. And when she doesn't really seem into it, he acts like she's throwing away this massive opportunity. So meanwhile, Ratka has a chef cooking up food in a sound booth for some reason, and his assistant walks in with her boobs hanging out. Not sure as to why this is, I guess it's to make him look like a pig, but it just seems kind of ridiculous. And if you thought the audio was bad in the last scene, just check out this smash up of different recordings. I don't care if it's the President of the United States on the phone. That's why I got the timer. <laughs> now you got the photos for that negative Anderson spot? Here they are, sir. It keeps me hip, it keeps me in tune with America. That's what keeps you in touch with the 90s, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I have it on good authority that there's some very high people in the Pentagon who will not use Cremora. They have entire battalions of witnesses just waiting. So this is Shayna's father. Apparently he's supposed to be dead, but he goes into the men's room to retrieve something that was hidden in the paper towel dispenser. Hey, can a man have any peace and quiet? I, Bedlow, it's you. See now, this guy is in a stall, yet somehow he just knows it's him. So he ties this guy up and walks down the hall where apparently some guy is aiming a bow and arrow at him. But guess what? It was just another one of Shayna's movies that someone was watching. I bet you thought it was really happening. You just got mind trapped again. And this is the brilliance of this movie. With all these twists and turns, you're never really quite sure exactly what is happening and what's not happening. It, it never gets annoying. Ginger? Dad? Your father? I'm not. I'm sorry. So I guess Shayna's sister works at this, um, I don't know, military hospital. And now the guy from the stall is out looking for her dad. And he runs across the hall to the room. Now I understand that her attention in this moment isn't focused on the hallway. But how could you not see this in your peripheral vision? How could you not notice somebody running across a giant empty hallway. And wouldn't her awareness be raised a little, considering that she just thought she heard her dead father call out her name? Clap her on. It's a good thing he said that out loud to establish that right from the beginning, because believe it or not, it's actually a very important part of the scene. So Shayna and Ginger's father, Shane, start searching around this room when suddenly the lights turn off. I don't understand why I thought the lights were controlled by a clapper. And for those of you who don't know, or are maybe too young to remember, the clapper was a device from the 80s that you could use to turn on and off electrical appliances like television or lights. So instead of having to physically push a button or flick a switch, you could just do this. So you can imagine if you had a house full of these things, you'd just be hearing all day, just. Which seems weird now, but you gotta remember, this was back before the whole world suffered from nonstop anxiety. Maybe it was the start of all of this anxiety. Who knows? All I know is that now, people would much rather install a microphone from a giant tech company into their house and let them take care of turning on and off the lights. Anyways, Ginger comes into the same room and for some reason has to say the slogan first. Clap her on, clap her off. Okay, I'm sorry. This is starting to feel like product placement now. Is this whole scene just an ad for the clapper? While you think on that, I am going to go through and disinfect my whole condo with these Lysol disinfecting wipes. Because right now we have to stay healthy, we have to stay clean, and after shooting an episode, I wipe down all my equipment with the wipe that kills 99.99% of viruses and bacteria. Seriously though, I'm actually not sponsored, but Lysol, if you are watching, uh, could you help me out a bit? You know, toss something my way. And I'm not talking about money, just send me some more of these wipes, because I have a feeling by this time next week, uh, these will be the most valuable thing on the planet. So now there's this back and forth clapper war between Ginger and her father, who is trying to hide, until finally he's like, hey, I'm gonna be dead soon, again, and the bad guys are gonna take over the mind control division, so take this key and hide it. 
Then the Russian bad guys come in and just unload hundreds of bullets into this guy. It's so hilariously gratuitous, but I will say that this just goes to show how effective the clapper is at detecting loud claps. A truly remarkable product, ahead of its time in many ways. Somehow after being turned into a human sponge, Shane is still able to talk to Ginger. Do we ice the girl too? Of course. Please, please, just, just another second. All right. I have to say that's actually very polite. You know, giving her another second to live right after you killed her father right in front of her. Like, yeah, okay, take a second or two. So I guess this naval officer figured something was wrong when he saw the guard passed out on the floor instead of the dozens of gunshots. And... I am, sir, Commander Morris Johnson, attached to the Navy Special Forces, first class. So, I'm not exactly sure what's going on. The bad guys are with the Navy and working with the Russians? I don't know who I'm kidding. I don't know why I try to explain the plot sometimes. Especially when this whole scene feels like it was written and performed as a joke. They killed him for his key! What key? Yes, what key? I'll keep my eyes open for that key. They killed my father. They were after his key. What key? Um, never mind. Hmm, I'm going to keep an eye out for that key. So they, I don't know, arrest Ginger for some reason. Hey, isn't that your sister? Yeah. You've got to get a new agent. Are we going to... Do anything about that guard passed out on the floor? I'm gonna lock you in here when I decide what to do. Do a little investigating. Ah, yes, one of those rooms that can only be locked from the outside. So Ginger calls for help, and usually in this type of situation, you'd have somebody on set, like a script supervisor, reading the lines for the person on the other side of the phone, just so that the actor uh, can time out the delivery of their lines, but I'm not really sure what they did here. Security. Is it security? Yeah. You gotta love how this conversation starts. Hello, security. Yes, is this security? No, I like to, I like to say that just to mess with people. And as I was just saying, I don't think they had anyone reading the other character's lines here because she barely gives any time for them to respond. So it just ends up with her talking over him most of the time. You know, funny thing, um, you know Lieutenant Reinhardt? Well, oh, he's yeah. a good friend of mine, and somehow he locked me into his office. That's right for you. Can you come up and get me out? Oh, oh that would be great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Great, okay, right yeah. Here, here yeah. I come. Next, we have one of my favorite things, as you all know, a musical performance. And not just one, two. So I'm just gonna hit the old fast forward on that. Bruce finally shows up to let Ginger out and instead of just acting casual like, oh thanks, I accidentally got locked in somehow. She hits him with a flagpole. Sorry Bruce, I'll explain later. Or you could have just done none of that and there would be no need for an explanation. I mean, obviously he had no idea what was going on. Ginger goes to the party to tell Shayna and her mom that she saw their dad and that they killed him again. Everyone is really messed up from this news, and then Shayna's fiance or whatever is like, man, that sucks, but I gotta go. Take care of the horn for me? It's not every day that a man gives you his horn, but if he does, ladies, you guard that shit with your life. Robbie and his damn air horn. Don't speak ill of the horn, Shayna. Air horns only come along once in a while. They can be used for a variety of things, such as calling for help, but most importantly, annoying and scaring the shit out of people. So they go back to mom's house to talk about what their dad said before he died. And then we cut to outside where, oh, no, nope, looks like we just had a cut to the painting that their mom is sitting in front of. Kind of an odd cut, but okay. You know what? That was another mind trap. <laughs> I totally missed that one. Didn't even see it coming. Oh man, do I feel foolish. Suddenly the Russians break in and ladies and gentlemen, for the next few minutes, this movie is going to provide you with some incredibly believable reactions. Who are these guys? We killed your husband. And we will be happy to kill your daughter if she does not tell us where the key is. You killed my husband! You 
I really do love this though, just throwing the arms up in the air and then freezing. You killed my husband! We also get some more of the mix and match dubbing here. We have no interest in you, lady. It's your daughters who need to do the talking. Now I promised some believable, normal reactions, and I was not lying. Just check out this acting here. Your father would have been proud of me. <gasps> Love to Shayna. You girls, you take care I of each other. I hate beauty. Oh oh my God, mother! You all right? Mom! Mom! Mom, you were great. Crazy, but great. I like how she goes from watching her mother being killed to just accepting the situation in the blink of an eye. It's like she went through all the stages of grief that would come from watching a parent dying in the span of about three seconds. It's like, bang! Well, mom, you were great. Crazy, but great. I mean, the gun smoke hasn't even cleared and she's just like, well, she was a great mom. Not perfect, but but still. Well, that's that. So they decide to go ahead and rape Ginger, and Ginger kind of looks at Shayna and asks her to do something, and do something Shayna does. She manages to stop the rape by taunting the guy. And that's when it finally hits Shayna, the air horn. Robbie gave it to her for a reason. Maybe a situation just like this, it was meant to be. Because nothing scares away murderers and rapists like the sound of an air horn. And that's a scientific fact, you can look it up, but something about the pitch makes it impossible for them to get any sort of satisfaction from their crimes. So they just bail. So then Sonya shoots the air horn and then shoots Ginger. I guess they forgot that the air horn is only effective against men. Ginger then immediately tells Shayna where she hid the key, but Sonya hasn't even left the room. Sonya throws a grenade on the floor and Shayna tries to help Ginger get out of the house. Somehow she doesn't have enough strength left to take an extra step out the door, but does have enough strength to push Shayna out of the house. So the grenade explodes, and this is actually a lot smaller scale than I was expecting, considering that this is the couch. Anyways, the next day, Shayna is, I don't know, sitting inside of the house, I think, and some military officer is like, hey, I need some leads. And I mean, if this is the same house where the murder and the explosions took place in, wouldn't this be take, like, wouldn't this be a crime scene, you know? Maybe an investigation taking place? And quite frankly, I'm not expecting some kind of master performance here, but Shayna just basically lost her whole family. She literally just watched her mother and sister get murdered, and there's really not much of a change in her attitude. Now this is probably one of my favorite parts of the movie. Shayna is going through a binder of photos and can't find any pictures of the suspects Sonya and Mojo and then suddenly she just looks out the window and there he is so Mojo runs out of the building and proceeds to Stop and make a payphone call to Sonya. I guess they take him in and then someone calls this officer I don't know his name, but he clearly has a crippling apple addiction Anyways, I have no idea who's calling him because the audio is so terrible But they order him to release Mojo in the next scene the Russians have Shayna's husband captured and cut off his finger and then mail it to Shayna at her exploded house, which she's still living in for some reason. And they call her and tell her that she'll get Robbie back when she tells the authorities that, and I'm quoting here, Mojo isn't the guy that didn't do nothing. That is a triple negative there, folks. You just got mind trapped again. There's the single negative, which is negative, the double negative, which makes it a positive, and the legendary triple negative, which flips it back into being a negative. So technically the line uh, does make sense. Then Sergey calls to tell her that she's got an audition, but either something went wrong with this VHS transfer, or they just cut off his line in editing. Uh, thanks, Sergey. Um, things are really tough right now. Yeah, I know I heard the news, but I thought, well, it might get your mind off of things. And it is Roger Racta, the producer. Racta? I thought you might be able to Yeah, I can at that. And then the weird thing is they switch the audio from sounding like he's on the phone to sounding like he's in the same room with her. And it is Roger Racta, the producer. I can at that. When is it? Friday at 3. Shayna finds Robbie in the back of a car and then has this moment where she speaks to her dead family and vows revenge on the Russians 
with the least amount of emotion possible. And then she gets right to work by sitting around and reading. Kind of takes all the air out of that monologue. I mean, how serious is she about this whole thing? Promising to avenge the death of her family and then sitting on the couch and reading a book is kind of a far cry from the action-packed total mind seduction that we were promised on the cover. By the way, um, we're already halfway through the movie and we have yet to see this dream room they keep talking about. This is apparently the plot of the whole movie. I mean, this is what the Russians are after. They're trying to get to the dream room and use it for evil. What is it? Where is it? Let's see this thing. So Shayna takes Robbie to the hospital and tries to explain his missing finger as part of an accident with an electric can opener. We were using the can opener unsupervised. This was really the best answer you could come up with. Imagine all the thoughts running through this doctor's head right now. Was this some kind of industrial sized can opener? What do you mean unsupervised? Are you eight? You need some kind of a can opener safety expert there to guide you through the process? Then they just find Mojo walking to his car somehow and follow him to a museum. And here it's a combination of the poor audio and the terrible attempt at a Russian accent. But I really don't understand what's being said here. It's basically about the key or something. But again, here's the weird thing. This audio recording is mixed with another one. How you say in your country? Many hands make light work. Or as they say in your country, it takes more than one gulag to make an archipelago. Now boys and girls, let's not lose sight of what has brought us together in common cause. I have no great love for Sonia. This pops up in so many of the movies that I've covered and it drives me nuts. I just don't understand it. I mean, no, I wasn't there during the production, obviously. So no, I don't know what happened. Maybe they couldn't get the actors back, all the actors to do the ADR, who knows. But if you're gonna re-record part of a scene because of audio issues or whatever, why not re-record the whole scene? This whole thing sounds like garbage. So Shayna decides to infiltrate their little hideout by dressing differently. Of course, Mojo recognizes her, but I guess it's a good thing he's an idiot because Shayna somehow convinces him to take her to his boss as if it's going to benefit him somehow. So he lets her drive his car, and at one point, she stops and tries to run away, but gets caught, so then once again, he lets her drive. I get the idea that if you drive, you're kind of left vulnerable to her, but based on the way she's driving, man, she's more of a danger behind the wheel than in the passenger seat. So then through an editing sequence that reminds me of something I did in high school, Mojo is thrown from the car and gets impaled. Then Shayna walks up on top of a pile of trash and has her own Luke Skywalker moment, which I find quite weird. Wouldn't you want to leave the scene as soon as possible? Then we have a sequence where Shayna is in a shootout with a bunch of guys, and, but it turns out it's just part of the commercial. She's in another mind trap. But it also turns out that they were using live ammo during the shoot, which is no doubt going to come into play again at some point in the movie. Anyways, they capture Shayna and it turns out that Robbie was helping them the whole time, which I don't understand. I mean, man, talk about commitment to the con. Dude, let them cut off his finger. So anyways, they tie her up and set a bomb to go off in three minutes, but she convinces Robbie to stay and have sex with her, even though, you know, a bomb is about to go off. And that's exactly what happens. But it's a good thing Shayna flipped him towards the bomb, which somehow protected her from the explosion, which makes absolutely no sense. I also like how the bomb explosion seems to be smaller than the grenade explosion we got earlier. So Shayna hides in the staircase going down to, I guess the dream room maybe? I don't know, I wasn't paying attention. Sonia and Ratka come back to check on what happened and for whatever reason, don't see her right in front of them. So she stabs Sonia, which kills her instantly. And then a long chase happens through this corridor until Shayna is finally able to kill Ratka, which she takes a lot of pleasure in. A little too much if you ask me, but whatever, to each his own. And now finally, this is the dream room. We finally get to see it at the very end of the film. Shayna starts having all these horrifying dreams, which lead to them all hanging out on a boat. 
and then she disappears from the dream room, so... I, I don't know, the movie just ends. Did she die? Did she go into the dream world? Who knows? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the ultimate mind trap. You probably thought this movie was going to have a coherent conclusion. And then, boom, mind trap. Nope, it's over. In the end, I think we can make the conclusion that the whole movie was a giant mind trap, based on the poster, at least. Again, Dan Haggerty was barely in the movie, and I still don't know who this is supposed Is that supposed to be Ginger? I don't know. She never wore this outfit in the movie, and there was no mind seduction, much less total mind seduction, unless you count uh, Shayna, you know, seducing her, you know, fiance or whatever in the room with the bomb that was about to go off. I guess that's mind seduction, you know? Take your mind off the explosive device and on the sex. Really, the only accurate thing about this poster is the gun. There were guns in this movie, and that's my trap. I hope you all had a lot more fun watching this video than I did watching this video. But as usual, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.